Riyadka Dua. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Chairman, for giving me chance to speak on a motion of thanks to the President for his address. I will, it's a wide ranging address touching on issues of important concern on a very broad field before the country. Dwaji, there are two speakers in the nominator, so you have 15 minutes. But I would like to focus only on issues concerning foreign policy which have been in, neglected in the debate throughout the day. Nobody can differ with the broad content of the foreign policy approach that is to defend, to promote the enlightened self-interest of the country. The self-interest of the country, the phrase came oh, from Jawaharlal Nehru and it is still sustainable and most of the parties in the house as well as all sectors of society will support this approach. A particular interest was the emphasis that this government will seek and continue to seek better relations with all the neighbors, with Pakistan, Nepal, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Burma, Bhutan. And this is evident from the forthcoming visit of the Foreign Minister, Prime Minister to Bhutan and Foreign Minister, Minister of External Affairs to Bangladesh. All sections of the House and people outside supported the invitation which was given to the leaders of the South Asian countries to attend the swearing in ceremony of the new Prime Minister. I have been a supporter of the move made by Mr. Atul Bihari Vajpayee and Dr. Manmohan Singh for seeking peace with Pakistan. This did not mature in durable peace with Pakistan, which all the people know the factors. I can't have the time to narrate what are the factors. But I'm a little worried about the situation which is developing in the northwest of India. Look at the reports which are coming from Karachi. For three days, a serious attack has been made. at the Karachi airport. This is not an isolated instance. Pakistan has been in grip of terrorist and fundamentalist movements, jihadi movements, and often there are such incidents. This, but Karachi became the center for this kind of attack after the Marian attack earlier on the naval establishment. That it should take three days for Pakistan to tackle the situation is a matter of concern, not only to Pakistan, it's a matter of concern for us also. Recently, there was an attack on Indian consul, consulate in Herat. An Indian worker, aid worker has been kidnapped. There was an attack on Mr. Abdullah Abdullah, likely to take over as president of Afghanistan. That's why I'm referring to the situation developing in the Northeast. If Pakistan government, which is divided between civilian government as well as the military, and military again is, uh, there are sections which are not uh, having their own government, ISI and others. No one knows who will control the situation in Pakistan and Afghanistan. If there is fire next door, I don't think India can remain unaffected. If there is a fire next door, despite our very good intentions for peace, and I have been supporter of this peace move, we cannot neglect the situation. The fundamentalists Jihadi elements have been objecting to any move which Pakistan government, civilian government would like to have. 
And whenever in the past our experience has been, whenever there was a slight progress in the dialogue with Pakistan, there have been attempts to scuttle that effort by staging terrorist incidents this side of the border or in their own country. The argument given that Pakistan is a victim of terrorism, yes it is, but we are the victim of terrorists which have been exported to us. The President's address says that there will be zero tolerance of terrorism in India. Pakistan government is not able to say that there will be zero tolerance against terrorism in Pakistan. Let's see the scenario which can, if Pakistan fails to tackle terrorism on its soil, it fails to prevent terrorists creating incidents in India, it can lead to very bad situation. Also there is an impact on Afghanistan. The US troops are leaving Afghanistan by the end of the year. Chunk of the troops have already left. There can be vacuum in Kabul. We have invested considerable political, strategic and economic capital in Afghanistan during the last 10 years as a matter of policy. Two billion dollars of economic development funds we have spent there already, even which has helped in stabilizing the situation. But statistically, the YG, the YG one minute. I'll finish in I want one minute. I want to take the sense of the house. Can we sit another 30 minutes more? If the house, eh? Eh? Complete the discussion. So, it's still a little bit. by 5 o'clock and PM has to give a reply. And by that time, whatever has been decided in the business hardware committee or, or internal consultation, that uh, 12 hour time limit also will be over by that time. So, if the House want to have discussion and exhaust other members also, we can continue <coughs> for some more time. Please. So that others also yeah, yeah. Time. Any of 30 minutes is agreed. Ha, okay, now, 30 minutes I have a request to the Parliamentary Affairs Minister. Because you see, your party and uh, the opposition party are given a number of times, but discuss and try to reduce in names. They are, they are working out. Please they do that. They, both, both the uh, ah. OS and uh, yeah. uh, deputy leader, they are working to give discussions yeah, yeah. and they will be able to. Otherwise, you, it will not uh, be. We so. don't want to do it arbitrarily. We don't want no, to discuss and the also. They ah, discuss. Yeah, discuss and do it. So now, I'll, I'll uh, please continue. Please I'll, co I'll cooperate and uh, be brief. Thank you. So the situation which is there in Pakistan and then in Afghanistan, which is likely to, likely to happen, it can happen after the American troops have withdrawn, who will fill the vacuum? It is Pakistan supported Taliban would like to fill the vacuum. All accounts suggest that those are the plans. There are talks between Pakistan and Afghanistan Taliban. They have not given up the aim to come to power in Kabul and, and judging and judging from the attacks on our Indian embassies twice, a recent attack on Herat and the kidnapping of an Indian shows their intentions are not in order as far as India is concerned. The Prime Minister I would like should take the house into confidence how we are going to meet the situation after the American troops have withdrawn. USA is going to leave, USA is going to leave only 6,000 to 9,000 troops in Afghanistan plus drones. Now the drones can kill people on the ground, they cannot control the situation on the ground. 6,000 to 9,000 people. US troops or NATO troops which will be there, they can't control the situation. We have entered into an agreement with Karzai government, strategic partnership agreement. We are definitely giving them some arms training, but we also don't want to get involved in the imbroglio that is in Afghanistan. Whosoever has gone into Afghanistan has burned the fingers. There has to be some clarity in the government and I would like the Prime Minister to make a statement when he speaks tomorrow here in this house 
to make it clear what is our policy on Afghanistan, what is our policy in Afghanistan after the US troops have pulled out. We cannot leave. The effort which we have made 10 years for economic stability and political stability in Afghanistan go waste. We cannot become a situation in Afghanistan which is against Indian interest. In Pakistan itself, if the terrorists are not able to be controlled, the government is not able to control the terrorist groups in Afghanistan, the situation can be worse. There is another danger. Failure by the authorities, whichever they are in power in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, they can divert Taliban to situation in Kashmir, which can create another problem for us. So I have a feeling the Prime Minister should make a statement, what will be our policy, how he is looking at, how the government is looking at the developing situation in Pakistan and Afghanistan. I have a feeling there will be enough consensus in the house as well as outside for whatever the policy we will adopt to the Pakistan. Even with the peace initiative it takes, even that will be supported by the government. But the situation which is developing is not very congenial and that should be warning for us. There was talk of consensus by the leader of the house which was responded positively by Mr. Ghulam Nabi Azad and he said they will provide constructive opposition. Consensus is needed and with this point I will just conclude in foreign policy, in security policy, in both internal and international security, on terrorism. There is also consensus needed on the working of parliament. This consensus are missing the last three, four years and it cost the nation and parliament a great deal of prestige among the people. Initiative for that consensus has to come from the Prime Minister and his government. I have a feeling, judging from the debate today, from all sections of society, Mr. K. C. Tyagi, Mr. Ghulam Nabi Azad, D. Peter Party, others who have responded to the idea of consensus, that this should be consensus is important for running of the house as well as outside also. The chair will be very happy if there is consensus. Okay. Thank you very much. I will just say, running of the foreign policy and an effective security policy, an effective, in effective policy, foreign policy also requires social coherence outside in the country. With that remark, thank you very much for giving me chance at the later. Thank you very much.